Hello, we're back for our third challenge, which is called Python Wrangling, and it's in the general skills category of the Pico CTF. Description, Python scripts are invoked kind of like programs in the terminal. Can you run this Python script using this password to get the flag? Okay, so let's download everything. We've got the password, we've got the Python script, and then we have what is probably uh, an encoded or encrypted version of the flag. So we're going to bring this all in so we can read it. It's a VS code. And we're going to look at what we have. So we have a password here. OK. We have this must be the flag encrypted. And then we have a Python script here. And I'm guessing this Python script is going to unencrypt that flag for us. And I'm going to just quickly read it from the top so we can see uh, base64 is an encoding. We can see cryptography and that they're importing this. We see, this is really nice at the top, usage messages. So typically when you do something like uh, wget minus h stands for help. And you'll see I get all this instruction on how to actually use wget, which pulls down files. So this is kind of like that in that this is telling me the usage. Um, I'm going to also quickly clean this all out. Uh, make your old, sorry, I have this from running through this before I decided to talk with you guys. Uh, this is a smart way. I think I can just do this. Move everything into old. Yeah, and that's fine. Now all my things have been moved. So we'll use wget to pull those things down to run in our shell. And we'll look and see what kind of guidance we get when we run it. If it fails, if it works, etc. So right now I'm just pulling down all the files just like I did locally. It's just a little bit nicer to have them locally with a nice code editor versus looking at them like this. So I'm going to first, we won't be able to run this. So if you look, uh, I just did a listing of all the files in this directory and it shows me the permissions that they have. That's this leftmost column, the owner, the group, the size, the date made, created, and then the names. So if you look at this Python script, it doesn't have the ability to execute. So there's read, there's write, and there's execute, which do what they imply. You can read a file, you can write to a file, and you can execute it. So what we need to do is we need to chmod, which means change uh, permissions, change modification. I, I don't really know why it's not change permissions. We need to add the ability to execute to this script. And then we are going to run it by just calling its name. And it fails, which is not surprising. And one of the things I noticed on looking at it was it doesn't declare that it's Python at the beginning. So shebang Python. In Linux, a shebang indicates how you should run something. So it says, essentially, I am this kind of file. So I am a script meant to be run by this executable Python. And from going through this before, I know. So I'm going to do a which Python just to see where our Python is. That, so just so you know, Python. Brings up the Python interpreter. OK, great, which is just a program, which tells you the location of this executable. So where is it coming from? It's coming from user bin Python. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add this on just so that it knows what it is first. Right now, it doesn't even know what it is. Uh, oops. And the reason for that mess up is it wasn't user local bin. Remember, it was just user bin. So that was a bad copy paste on my part. There we go. OK, so now it, it knows what's going on. And it knows it's Python, and it's giving us a much nicer error with that usage, whereas before, it didn't understand it was Python. We could have gotten around this another way. We could have instead called it with Python preceding it, and then this guy. And that would have worked. I think I'll, I'll just quickly show you this, just so you know. So I deleted that line. And now you can see we get the nice uh, message, whereas it would have complained a lot because it didn't understand it before. OK, so just things you need to know when dealing with Python. So we saw our usage notes. It says, call me with an E or D, which I think are encrypt or decrypt, and a file name. OK, we'll do that, minus uh, D to decrypt, and we want to decrypt 
flag dot. Why are we not able to find it? Okay, no autocomplete. I don't know why. And enter the password. Well, we have the password. I'll just grab it from here. I want to make sure not to have those extra characters. Did you see how when I highlighted I had a space at the end? I don't want to have that. Okay, that looks good. And there we go. Um, I don't know what that is. For Apollo in the house. All right, cool. And if it hadn't been this easy, if it didn't have usage notes, we would have had to have gone through and read and seen that it expects, uh, let's see, so this is saying if there are less than two args or greater than four, exit and complain. And then it gets into, if it's told to encrypt, it looks to see that it has less than four arguments. And if so, it'll ask for uh, a password. So we would have just broken this down and looked at the file and uh, determined how to make it work. But since it's so nice and it just gave us the uh, usage, we'll just submit the flag. Bang! Knock it down. If you attempted this challenge and struggled, you might be feeling bad about yourself. It looks like I did it so easily, a walk in the park. Sometimes that's true, but most of the time it's absolute chaos. As I misread the question, forget how to do basic tasks, wonder why I'm not better at this, struggle to string together sentences to a non-existent audience and debug mistakes. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time on Twitch. You'll feel better about yourself after watching me fail. I guarantee it.